I'm here today with Bistra at the AI for Good Summit. Um, so before we kind of really get stuck into it, can you just introduce yourself and give me a bit of an overview of your background um, and how you sort of begun your work in conservation and AI? Sure. Well, uh, I'm really happy to be here at the Rework AI for Good Summit. And my name is Bistra Gilkina. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. And I'm also there an associate director for the Center of AI in Society where our mission is basically to help leverage artificial intelligence to impact uh, problems that are of particular social importance like public health, wildlife conservation, uh, disaster planning, etc. And um, yeah, so I've been uh, an AI researcher for now, I don't know, more than 10 years. Uh, I did my PhD at Cornell University and I'm originally from Bulgaria, but I've had a long journey around the world <laughs> to Amazing. get there. Yeah. So what was it that initially attracted you to kind of like the social impact side of things within AI? Right, so the way that I involved in using AI for social good was actually during my PhD at Cornell where uh, my advisor, Professor Carla Gomez, actually had this uh, amazing vision about uh, building a new uh, interdisciplinary research field called computational sustainability where a lot of scientists from across of many different domains have, were already looking at trying to use their science to inform uh, sustainable development and how to achieve the goals that we have. However, computer science was really kind of lagging behind. People were not as involved. And so computational sustainability was meant to kind of really bring these, these open challenges to computer scientists, get them involved and leverage their skills. And from being kind of like a hardcore, just AI uh, person looking at algorithms in an abstract perspective of how we solve hard combinatorial problems, I suddenly started looking, well, what are the real world problems that these AI techniques can help? And I got really passionate about sustainability, and in particular, the whole biodiversity conservation challenge. Yeah, definitely. And it's something that I think deserves so much time being spent on it at the moment, and it is something that's really emerging. But kind of going back to the technology side of things, what was it when like that attracted you to AI initially? Were you interested in like science and technology when you were a kid, or was it when you got a bit older? No, actually, it was very early on. So I, I was kind of like into math since yeah. I was very tiny, maybe like third, fourth grade. Actually, my mom is a math teacher, so it was kind of okay, difficult right. not yeah. to be. Uh, but um, I guess. Uh, so I was always very good and very interested in math, but I also kind of really liked solving real problems and like thinking about the outside world and what is it that we do to impact it. And so when I first got into computer science, which I think was in the beginning of high school, and I realized, wow, in, with computer science, I can use like my math thinking, but create like software that does stuff, you know, yeah. and impacts things. Uh, I got really, really excited about it. And so were you at high school in Bulgaria? Yeah. And they offer computer science as something that you could study? Yeah, yeah. Like That's in amazing. In the UK, grade. there's nothing like that. Okay. Until university level, you can't do any computer science. Or you probably can now, but when I was at school, there was no options. Yeah. We had kind of IT, which was how to input some data on a spreadsheet and how to make a PowerPoint presentation, and that was it. It oh, was wow. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess I was lucky. I didn't even realize. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have a computer in my house like when I was growing up, but yeah. somehow I was exposed to it at school. That is amazing. And so you said obviously that you've always been interested in like applying this kind of work to real world. Problems. Is conservation something you've always been interested in, or was that just when you got to your PhD and you saw the opportunities there? Right, so conservation was n not necessarily on my radar, although I've always been very passionate about nature. Yeah. Like, I uh, really, with my family, uh, we've been like into hiking since I was a small kid, so I, I have this passion for nature and, uh, um, you know, kind of uh, an appreciation for it. Yeah. But the challenge about biodiversity conservation, I really learned about that during my PhD, where Basically, when I started looking in which of the sustainability goals I could potentially impact with my work, I spent like one year of my time during my CS PhD of just like kind of put on hold and like really dive into reading ecology and biology pr papers and understanding what are some of the computational challenges that, that we can bring techniques to bear. Okay, amazing. So I know that you're working on um, using AI to help um, ecologists and that kind of thing. So can you tell us a bit about that and how you're, how you're doing that really? Right. So so I have like several different, I guess, uh, ways in which I, I have uh, impacted conservation. So yeah. one of the 
the areas is, for example, using um, optimization techniques to inform uh, conservation planning. So a lot of uh, action on the ground has to always be taken with very limited budget. So how do we spend the limited resources that we have to conserve the best areas that will have uh, the most impactful outcome? And one very difficult problem is, for example, where you want to conserve wildlife corridors which connect uh, habitat areas through, uh, through broader landscapes which might get fragmented or developed over time. And so developing these large-scale uh, algorithms that are able to solve these big spatial problems is, is quite challenging. The other one that I have uh, really got involved in lately is actually using artificial intelligence for fighting wildlife poaching. Uh, so illegal wildlife poaching actually is a, is a huge problem that uh, I, I hope more people will become aware of. It's actually like an illegal industry that's on the scale, I mean, a little bit behind, but on the scale of like drugs and illegal firearms. Really? It's like maybe fifth on the list, you know? That's like it's I don't think people realize that at all. I don't think they do. But but it's an organized crime and it's, it's it has a, a very devastating impact on a lot of species and a lot of ecosystems. And in particular, even species that uh, like elephants, where 84% uh, percent of their range is actually already protected, their numbers are declining dramatically because there's poaching going on in protected areas. And in, in these areas, the only the boots on the ground are like park, park rangers that are trying to patrol to find the traps and snares or c catch the poachers in that. But obviously, these parks are often very vast and they have limited personnel. So how do we deploy most effectively rangers on the ground to help them? Yeah. you know, stop as much poaching as and possible. And how are you actually using AI to do that? So, uh, so we are actually working very closely with uh, non-profit organizations that are working with protected areas such as uh, WWF and WCS. So actually for a long time, as I said, park rangers have been on the ground patrolling. Yeah. And so they've actually been collecting a lot of data about their uh, patrolling, what they found and so far. But, but this data is mostly uh, used in kind of statistical way of reporting where do they find things. Now we are actually using machine learning to take this historic data and build predictive models, which are able to tell us in particular areas of the park with particular landscape characteristics and particular time of the year, how likely it is to, to actually have poaching activity. And, and basically these machine learning models are um, able to give us heat maps of risk that then can m help park rangers make recommendations about patrolling. That is amazing. Um, and so at, US, um, at USC, what is something that particularly exci excites you about being involved in this project there? Like what do you like about working there? So USC attracted me because they actually have a dedicated uh, center called uh, the USC Center on AI and Society case. And in fact, that, that's really what drove me to, to move to USC because it actually has a whole group of faculty and students that are extremely passionate about using AI for social good, which spans conservation, but also a lot of other areas like public health, homelessness, uh, mental health issues. And so this uh, kind of like intellectual um, um, pool of people that have similar passion for social impact is extremely stimulating and also allows us to work together closely for, for a bigger impact. Definitely. So what does a typical day look like for you or is there not really one? Uh, <laughs> I guess every day is different but usually yeah. involves something of uh, meeting with students, about talking about their research. We often, we also have a lot of conversations either over Skype or in person with partners. So as I said, we work with a lot of domain experts and, 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 and non-profit organizations which, you know, provide the problems and data. So we, we often have meetings with, with, with stakeholders and partners as well and obviously teaching as well. Um, last uh, spring, I actually taught for the first time uh, an undergraduate class on AI for social good, and that was really exciting because mostly so far I've kind of taught this stuff on, um, on the graduate level because it involves a lot of like cutting edge research as well. But um, there was a lot of undergrads that kept on coming. It's like, when are we gonna have a class like that for us? Like there, there's really a lot of, um, interest and hunger for from the undergraduate students to try to like 
use their you know newly minted AI and machine learning skills from their other classes for for uh, social good problems. Definitely, and I mean, technology in general does have quite a reputation for being quite a male-dominated kind of industry. And obviously, you said that there are lots of undergrads that are interested in this kind of thing. And obviously, it's great to encourage more young people into both AI and conservation, social impact, and that kind of thing. Um, but what do you think we can do to encourage more diverse backgrounds and more girls and women into the space? Yeah, great question. Actually, that's kind of one of the, the, the nice things about, uh, about this, this work in, at the intersection of AI and sustainability and AI for social good, which I think it can have a tran transformative impact also on the education side. Yeah. Because I believe by having uh, presenting computer science material in the context of real world problems, especially from a social uh, perspective that can be impacted with the skill set, I think it's going to motivate uh, uh, a more diverse body of students to try to get involved that maybe come from, you know, they might not have yet, you know, the, the coding skills, they might have not taken those classes, AP classes in high school, but they care about, let's say, nature or they care about uh, homelessness, etc. and they actually get involved because of that motivation and soon will learn that, yeah, absolutely, they can get the computer science down as well. And I've seen that in my classes when I offer specialized classes like on computation sustainability, on AI for social good, the ratio of students, of female to male students, is always much better than your generic, you know, let's say, algorithms class in CS. Okay, well, that's amazing. It's good to hear that there is more of a balance in this kind of area. Um, so, a bit more generally, what is something at the moment that's going on like, in the AI world that you're really excited about? Well, what I'm really excited about is, uh, is exactly seeing this um, more and more projects in which you, you see the, the AI really going from the data to models and algorithms to deployment in the social, social good area, right? So um, I guess there's, there's a, lot of, um, a lot of work in AI that is kind of research and you know, developing algorithms and so on, but I think where we really can make an impact is really making sure that it gets all the way down to, to the field, right? And that happens naturally in industry when there's money involved and like, you know, there's the companies take it over and then they make sure that they productionize it. Now in the social good area, that's harder and I, I see a lot of, um, a lot of excitement and a lot of effort to, to really get that pipeline all the way to, uh, to the field and, 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 and I think that's the really important part. Definitely, so what's next for you in your work? What are you next going to be working on? Um, so one thing that uh, right now, a new project that uh, we are starting is that's related to uh, biodiversity conservation is um, many, many protected areas are, are starting to use uh, camera sensors called camera traps that are basically placed around the protected areas that are able to uh, capture animals when they move in the view of, of, of the camera. And these camera traps are used to uh, study the species distribution, de detect declines, uh, even maybe like detect poachers and so on. Okay. And, and, and it's becoming a technology that it's really uh, being adopted. And one thing that is, is challenging there is how do we design the pattern in which we place these sensors uh, if we only can, let's say it's a small nonprofit, it can only afford to buy 15 cameras or 20 cameras and they have a, a larger area to place them in. So how do we design this uh, placement pattern in a way that maximizes our use of resources? So it's actually a very difficult kind of optimization, machine learning problem and, and hopefully we're going to do something interesting about it. Yeah, well, it sounds really exciting. So where can we kind of keep up to date with any of your work? Do you have a website or Twitter? Where's the best place that we can yeah, follow your progress? Yeah, so I have a Twitter account. It's uh, B. Dilkina, basically the first letter of my uh, uh, name and then last name. Uh, also, our Center for AI and Society case has a, a website where we, we keep updated all our projects and our, our papers and our students. So that's a very good place to, to see the kind of stuff we're doing. Amazing. Well, we'll be sure to follow you there. So thank you so much for joining me today. It's been really interesting to chat with you. Thanks, Yes. Thanks for having me.